Hi, this is Chris, and though I'm usually one of the irreverent intolerable players, as we switched to a new story, I agreed to take up the mantle of novice GM for a chance to introduce most of our crew to my favorite tabletop RPG, Battlelords of the 23rd Century. I was first introduced to the third edition of Battlelords back in 1997, where it rapidly became my favorite system. It can be as crunchy and granular as the most detailed military and survival sim, or as freewheeling and lighthearted as, as you want to make it. Set in a future where galaxy-spanning civilizations share power with or are run by megacorporations, Battlelords provides an entire universe of stories to create and explore, from exploration into the unknown and corporate espionage, to wars with hostile extragalactic aliens and ancient entities. You can play as any one of 14 species, from your everyday human to energy matrix controllers, to a species of genetically engineered bunny people of questionable lineage. Battles will be fought with anything from the latest pulse rifles right down to being a giant lizard beating an unruly battle cat with an equally giant wooden thwackum stick on some primitive backwater. If you survive character creation. Some don't. For this small taste of the game, our players will be running a mission from the Charlie Foxtrot Adventure Compendium for the 7th edition of Battlelords of the 23rd Century. This mission finds our assemblage of Battlelord wannabes getting hired on and sent to a luxury space resort experiencing an unknown infestation. It's not a glamorous gig, but the credits are good, and you never know what an opportunity to hop-nob with the galactic elite will throw your way. So, thank you for joining us as I take our players through a tiny corner of this gigantic universe. Welcome to Last Resort at the Space Resort. We hope you enjoy the adventure, and I hope I can do it justice. Hello, and welcome to the Advanced Age Roleplaying Gamers Podcast. We're trying out Battle Lords. This is our, uh, we already did our session zero. We created the characters, kind of, mostly. And we're uh, starting with, the, with session one. Um, and this is, uh, uh, Chris is the GM. And we're going to go around and why don't we um, have everybody at least uh, introduce their, their characters real quick. And then I'll hand it over to Chris. So, uh, Chris, why don't you, why don't you uh, call us out and tell us uh, who to, you know, Give I'll do that. Uh, so let's start with uh, with Sean. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pressure. I was, Fuck, I was literally going to mute and start prepping my voice, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so my, uh, I am Sean, and uh, this fine adventure of our, uh, we're going to get into, I'm playing. We're uh, not allowed to uh, use the words intrepid or adventurer, so I just want to what? make sure. <laughs> uh, God damn it. That's kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> throw throw all right, papers in our, the air. <laughs> in our brave new voyage, um, I will be playing Pempleton Tech, aka Spaceman. And Spaceman is a you know sort of decent guy. Walks around, wants to, wants to be helpful, and uh, you know he likes to be the you know the center of attention and life of the party. Not a big fighter guy. Actually, he's very very short at uh, you know about five foot three. Uh, little guy, humanoid, a normal human, nothing different. Uh, took him for this, the point spread for skills, and uh, he's got some strength in computers, and uh, and uh, and that's and uh, some other charismatic skills, and uh, that's that's pretty much his character. Who will be developing as we develop this game? Excellent, and a tier. Uh, hi, I'm Tier. I'll be playing uh, Hestu Vorin, a Razatz. Uh, mechanical engineer uh, and space repair being. Excellent. And uh, Matt? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Matt, and I am going to be playing uh, Bubble Fot, uh, who is a Fot. So if you don't know, that's a big, giant, engineered, uh, genetically engineered bunny person. Uh, and uh, Bubba uh, is a uh, hermit who spent a lot of time living in the mountains by himself. He's got some anger management issues, uh, and he's really fearful of technology because that's how they get you. Uh, so he's going to be he's gonna have a lot of fun. Um, he's, he has a lot of rage. He's, he's, gonna, he's, got, he's got the Holgram gene. <laughs> so <laughs> angry. <laughs> that's great so uh you're playing Holgram basically and i'm playing echoes hey, <laughs> <laughs> and nathan all right uh so i'm playing uh uh Begira karen uh Sizerac, and uh i'll probably throw, fl- throw up a picture on the screen but there's they're basically uh tiger like aliens that uh are huge and they have big heavy weapons. So she's got a big F F cannon, which is a a, a goo launcher that she ha- has mounted uh, uh, underneath her. And uh, 
She's a she's a frisky kitty cat. Uh, she she's uh, been around the block a couple times. It, what the? It's gotten her in some viral oh trouble, God. maybe more than once. Um, uh, other than that, I, I think she she's you know she does like to hop, to hop from system to system, and, and you know, she's it's maybe disease. has some debts that have gone unpaid. <laughs> you know, so now the man you know is trying to you know. Track me down, but uh, sounds yeah. sounds a lot like the uh, the bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to uh, to to get out there and kick some ass and and make some make some credits and and, uh, and maybe pay off my debts eventually. But you know, get some cool gear. And Malcolm. Okay, I'm Malcolm. I will be paying uh, Farouk Idan. He will be. He's an Iridani, which yes. is a. Um, uh, the best way to describe them, they are a sort of a samurai sword saint um, from a very militaristic sort of society. Uh, he is a house member of, in the cast of the Vax and a bounty hunter who has now turned his life to doing something, well, he hopes that will bring him honor despite the companions who seem to be on a path on a different direction. <laughs> Excellent. Well, to start with, uh, you each find yourselves here. Hey, oh, miss somebody. Do we? About, oh, Kupo, yes. He's in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. My name is De Santo El Floridia. I'm a Chilean. Ch- I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> Chilean. Chilean sea bass. I live in the Andes. With a nice bit of lemon on the side. Um, uh, or a Chatillion. I'm a Chatillion. <laughs> and I've been playing this game for a long time. <laughs> and I'm very anxious to read the minds of my comrades to see what their true motivations are. You see, that's my greatest skill is looking into the mind. It's a wonderful thing. And I find it mostly here. Uh, I find my purpose here is mostly to help see where I can assist in any way I can to stop this silly skirmish that going on for hundreds of years. Good. Well, welcome. So... <laughs> <laughs> just do it to the mind. Just, just think it. <laughs> Jesus, God. don't use your words. Don't use your words. Just Baby, you really got to work I, on that voice of yours. I really want to know more about that feisty kitty. It sounds quite, <laughs> quite a number. Well, you got to be <laughs> careful with them kitties. You know, you give them too much. You should probably wear some wild. sort of glove. <laughs> I don't think Koopa was around for uh, your armor, your cannon mounting option discussion. Uh, so no, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll I, discover I, that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so you each find yourselves uh, on in on Taos Four in the uh, waiting room of the local recruitment office belonging to High Energy Asset Defense Hunters Incorporated, a wholly owned subsidiary of Explore Inc., subsidiary of Space Systems Development Corporation. The decor is at least three decades out of date, unusual for Orions uh, who thrive on the latest fashion. A Tri V in one corner shows a cyball competition, whose audio is overwhelmed by the Tri V in another corner, which is airing an infomercial for Mad Mike's Hardware Emporium. It's around this Tri V which most are gathered. Mad Mike himself is on display, cackling wildly as he lays waste to what appears to be a pen full of turkeys with a pulse rifle. The turkeys have the pulse rifle. Mad Mike is a thunderbolt generator, the extra crispy. Most of the way- others in the waiting room are cheering on the turkeys, if only they had thumbs. What brought you all here t- uh, are probably many of the same things. Money, or lack thereof. Or you're trying to escape something. Cops, predators, crazed ex-lovers, it doesn't matter. Mostly it's the money thing, though, looking at this collection of questionable quality. A bored-looking Orion woman steps out of the back room and calls out names. The dinner on the infomercial quiets somewhat as she appears. She's not the first to summon back a set of potential recruits, but she's the first to name each of you. Without looking up from her data pad, she turns on her heel, clearly expecting you to follow. So she leads you into the back room, um, just your basic conference room, sits you all down, uh, looks at each of you, shakes her head, and she takes a Is moment to... Is there like a tree I can climb up on and sit the, you know, so I can look down on everybody? There is a large empty box in the back, if you choose. Oh, yeah, I've got the yes. box. I see the <laughs> box. Of course you do. So after a moment, she shuffles around her papers, she looks up, and says, All right, uh, we got uh, a 
contract from SSDC. Uh, there's apparently a rodent infestation at a luxury space hotel. Uh, this hotel is the, the Crystal Palace. Um, it's probably just some someone's pet, you know, Narfet has gotten loose into the ductwork and is just eating wires or something. I don't know. They just called us to get rid of it. We're going to send you guys. The uh, point of contact is uh, Captain Smith. He's the one who runs the operations of, the, of this luxury hotel. And um, they really don't want to, since this is a luxury hotel, they don't really want to make it known that they have this rodent problem. So we're going to go in kind of on the down low. Um, you will not be able to walk through the public areas of the hotel with your weapons and armor showing. Um, but right now, the rodent infestation doesn't appear to be manifesting anywhere there, so you should be good. Um, but you're going to meet Captain Smith on the uh, you know, on the hotel, and he'll give you the brief of what to expect. We don't expect much. It should be a quick clean of duty. This is why SSDC dumped it down to us. Any questions? Do we get to keep the rodents? Why would you want to keep What the you do with the rodents I mean, is none of our business as long as they're not on the station anymore. He wants a yeah, new wife. Right. You know you got to <laughs> feed that thing and train it so it don't bite anybody. Feed it? Why would I feed food? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to keep it as a pet, but well, I know fricassee a good recipe to rat, fricassee it. Fricassee rat, sauteed rat, boiled rat. If if that's what you like, man. It's, I'm good with rat it. Whatever on a you stick, like. Rat on a steak. Rat on okay, a fork. Okay, so we, we can move on there. That's a nice shotgun you have. He so, knows utensils. So, are we sticking to high explosives for this mission, or...? The less you damage the hotel and right. its occupants, the happier I'm sure the customer will be. Mm. Now, the oh, Narfits themselves probably don't warrant uh, explosives. They're just... They're cute little cuddly animals. They just uh, breed like fought. Um... Um, never mind. Uh, <laughs> that was a funny little joke you put in there. Oh boy, that's a uh, wait. They they must be doing it right then. So you'll from, be from the corner. You hear a clatter of metal, and you can see the Raza like where it, where he was sitting on uh, where he was sitting on its chair is just a pile, and he's got his he he's got his what looks like possibly a gigantic Swiss Army knife. He's taking it apart. And goes, where do we all stay? She drops something good. down on her data pad and says, you'll be delivered by a, a luxury shuttle owned by SSDC just to transport um, from one of our cargo carriers. Uh, it's going to arrive with luxury accommodations wow. uh, to the hotel. You'll be staying in the shuttle itself uh, during the course of this mission, which we expect two to three days. And then you'll be back here on the shuttle to ship back out. You'll have um, a contact from SSCC, uh, Katriona. Uh, she's the contract officer who's going to oversee operations. Anything you encounter on the mission, you want to report to her. She's the one to take care of it. And you will have a pilot, Encilius Fentari, as the pilot of your shuttle. Uh, he'll be there to serve as your piloting liaison. Oh, he will stay pilots. with the shuttle as well the entire time. Did you hear that, fellas? Luxury. I imagine luxury for you, my uh, furry friends, a little different from us, but indeed, luxury. Hmm. Shuttle leaves at uh, the end of business. If you got anything you want done before then, I'd suggest you get it taken care of. You know, I'll make sure I get my finer clothes together and, you know, prepare my, you know, prepare myself appropriately. I hope they have a bed big enough for me. I have the same problem. Ha ha ha. You guys, <laughs> you guys hear another clank, and you, the chair is back in the what you assume is original uh, an original shape. And the Raza flies up to the desk and just drops a bunch of nuts and bolts. Like, there are always extra parts. From the IKEA collection, I see. <laughs> she she just looks up at you, rolls her eyes, jots something else on the on the uh, tablet, and. Uh, Gets up, she goes, yeah, you, you can make your way to the flight deck now if you'd like. Uh, until then. Oh, boy, that sounds good. I'm going to go pack my gear. I'm so happy. My ears are twitching. Oh, I thought it was a movie. Shit. 
She just backs Last out one on the shuttle. slowly Gets and turns away. <laughs> he'll go. He'll kind of go hopping off toward the shuttle. <laughs> Secure my gear, and which is already ready in the head for the shuttle. Ah, this will be a. I'm sure this will be a fun ride for everybody. Uh, that depends on your definition of if it's necessary at all. Well, it depends who you sit next to or want a window seat. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the Razad starts starts flying and pulling a rolling armor case behind him. It's got patches all over it. Looks like the the lid is made of something else. It's got like some branding from another company on the side. Um, it may be advisable that you stick to things inside the bin. I mean, suitcase or. Try not to disassemble the shuttle on the way there. Quite often people pay me to disassemble shuttles. <sighs> they're in them and they're going somewhere, I suspect. It could always be improved. So Perhaps after we land. So you're a mechanic? Yes. That's Mechanical amazing. Engineer. Gen- designer. Designer. Repairs per repair being, yes. So that is what I do. So that battle sounds like tech a, a lot of different things. You fix stuff. Oh, so right? Battle Lords GM, we've all introduced you. We all know each other, things. right? Uh, no, you, you. Oh, we don't. Shit. You're literally just pulled at a random pool of recruits in a room. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, you know hey, nothing about uh, each other. <laughs> well, well, my character Pempleton will go up to. Hey guys, I'm uh, Pempleton Tech. Uh, you can call me Spaceman, and uh, you know, I like to facilitate things and help everybody out. So if you need anything, you know, if I could help you, let me know. It's Let's, nice to meet you all. Look forward to. Being on this grand adventure with you, even though it's just killing little rats. A big was, name that, was that? Was that? Was that mean? Is that like sexual? Assist? No, it's not sexual, man. It's assist. Well, it could mean for sexual, depending on the facilitation type. So, so you're the assistant, okay? It's no, cool. I'm we not the assistant. I want to help. That's awesome. No, baby, it's not like that. But you'll figure it out. I have faith in you. It's Pimpleton, right? Pimpleton Tech. You can just call me Space Man. That's what people like to call me. Space Man. I like Pimple. going out in the space. With or without a suit. Oh, but, oh, come on now. That's real funny. But, you know, always in a suit. It was just a question of... Now, the question is, do you go open face or not? That's the funny one. Why? The bunny oh, well, I like open face. You, you just, all you need is one slice of bread, and then you put the rat on top of it. And that's the open face. Wow, we have to work on your culinary progress, my friend. So I'm assuming you're all going to the ship. You have nothing else you want to do planned inside. So, yeah, they load you onto this this fancy shuttle. It's got, you know, captain's chair seats that recline into full beds. And that's about the extent of the luxury affairs. The best rest of it is the pretty paint job on the outside. This is a side of things I like to see. I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, In the room, I uh, communicate to everybody maybe for the first time uh, to some of the people in their minds. Uh, I am DeSanto, and it's agreeable to speak with you. <laughs> what the fuck what was, was that? that? I do have mental defense, by the way. one of them computers in here? It's talking in my head? Do not be in alarmed, lesser forms. I'm here to assist you. Another assistant? <laughs> Bubba uh, will start punching the the small like little computer console that, in his chair. Stop! 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 My yeah, friend, make that stop is talking to, in my head. That, that, that's that's talking one in of my our, head. That's one of our party talking to us. One of our friends here. That's the way they communicate. Apparently. Why? So, hey, I know what I hear. I don't hear nothing in my ears. His ears are like I, twitching around. I don't think around. we should party before we do this mission. I mean, unless you guys have some black tar heroin, that, then the, then it's like okay. But oh I don't think we should God. party. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So you got to go around Remus 5 to get the good black tower out here. As you're getting settled in the shuttle, um, <laughs> the door slithers open and uh, a Fintari walks in. You know, striding on two legs, tentacle just sort of whips over uh, uh. Bubba's head, takes a sniff, and goes, Hoss and Pfeffer. Oh, you must be Centauri. I call it. <laughs> so good to meet you, sir. Templeton Tech. Wait, what'd you say? I said it's a guy, right? The pilot, right? Oh, Ancilius. Ancilius. Well, I thought it was Ancilius yeah. Centauri. Uh, Fentari. He's Fentari. a Fentari. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ancilius, so nice to meet you. Pempleton Tech. Uh, looking forward to this journey with you. I look forward to the leftovers. Ha, ha, ha. Very good. <laughs> so you all get in the shuttle, and uh, it takes off. You dock with the uh, the big transport vessel. It's 
it takes you out the jump gate towards the station, it pops you out. And as you pop out of the shuttle, you get the view of the station from the outside. It's uh, just an old, you know, old sci-fi style looking hub and spoke, you know, the central pier with the ring around it. The upper half of the ring is all transparent glass and you can see inside. Uh, That's not going to cause a problem later. On the outward facing sections, the inward facing sections are all walls and windows. Uh, the bottom facing section is all, you know, looks like, spa- you know, actual metal, part, you know, exterior structure and it overlooks this beautiful nebula so mm-hmm. it's clear that this hotel was put here just so people can enjoy the view while they're enjoying their luxury accommodations and food the uh as you drift into this sh- into the shuttle bay uh right now it's empty except for you guys and uh as the shuttle comes to rest the doors open and a tall older human gentleman walks out uh he waits for you to disembark, and uh, he says they're waiting for you to come to him. He doesn't come out to you. Is this the yeah, Captain uh, Smith guy? Uh, you presume, but you don't know for certain. I Is this Katharina? That would be your name? <laughs> yeah, he grabs his backpack and his, and his rolling case, and he just, like, short flying hops, pulling the case behind, uh, pulling the case. I grab my gear, and I will, you know, walk off and, you know, look around. Yeah. Uh, uh, just my uh, ascot. Hoo-wee. This sure is a nice view out here. Uh, I'll, I'll come down the plank and, and turn around and show everybody, show everybody my uh, butthole. Um, <laughs> as you come out, the second human just uh, walks up next to the captain and uh, stands there just looking wide-eyed. And then a large uh, muscled Orion just stumbles out after him and stands behind them both. I melt his brain immediately. No. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up to the captain and I greet him. Well, yes, welcome aboard. Uh, I'm Captain Smith. Uh, this is the the Hotel Crystal Palace. Um, we've uh, got a few burdens. I'm sure. I'm sure that your employers told you about. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for a group such as yourself. Uh, but please, let me introduce you to this is. Uh, Cap- this is my communications officer, Roger. And Roger. he's the one... Yeah, he's the one wide-eyed. He jumps. He looks at everything. He looks like he's about 18. Hey, um, kid. What's going on? And he's just flustered. Is he humming as well? He is uh, humming as well. The uh, captain then just just the large gentleman behind them. He's like, and this is my first mate, uh, Clements. Um... He's the one who's going to take you down, show you where the problems arose, um, and make sure your equipment gets down to the lower levels uh, so you can take care of the problem. But... We will go separate from our equipment? You'll be separated from your equipment as we go through the populated areas of the hotel. We don't want our guests to be disconcerted by the approach of, you know, armed exterminators. I assure you we'll do everything we can to help, and I extend my hand to... um Shake it. So Smith is pleased that someone has a. He knows a point of contact now. So he, he shakes your hand. He's like, "Come with me. Uh, we'll take you to the uh, the office and sh- show you what we have." And I try to. And I want to read his mind. Make sure he's telling us the truth. So did they want us to change here, right here at the where we docked? Well, you're. I'm assuming you didn't fly in with. You're wearing your armor and your gear. Yeah. We wouldn't have done that. Yeah, because they told you they're, you're going to not be... Oh, okay. So, yeah. My question well, would then, be... And everyone would know that... It, so Bubba's spotting a full-on uh, molded tinfoil sort of hat that goes over top of his ears <laughs> and his head. Man, what are you doing with that? Gotta, gotta, gotta keep them space lasers out of your head. It doesn't work that way, my man. My good furry hey, friend. I, so are you performing a mind dive? So... That's a, this is a good first thing to bring up. Um, Chris, what's the difference between speaking telepathically and then going that extra, like, do I need to do a mind dive at this level? What is natural for him to collect and what is then a mind dive? So if you're trying to dig out more information than he's letting on, um, anything more than surface thoughts, then, yeah, you'd want to do the mind dive. 
Okay, and with that, and without going into a mind dive, am I getting any? Am I getting like sort of a lie detector test where he's like trying to keep something from me? Roll me uh, intuition. Forgive me, this is my first roll. So how many? Uh, what that's, it's, uh, first that's roll your of the game. Per, yeah, yeah, no, percentile dice. Yes, your two D tens. Thank you. Dick. Eighty-three um, <laughs> was the roll. I mean, oh. he seems a bit reserved, but it could be just his discomfort uh, at being in a luxury hotel with a rodent problem. All right. Sounds good. As I said, I already gave him the message, which was, uh, we're happy to help. So you want to try against the other two as well? Um, I mean, because well, you I, have the key. I go to so, the brute, then I go straight to the brute, and uh, I'm so happy you can assist this as well. What, so just a regular roll at this point? Okay. Now that's a 37. So there, he thinks they've got a much bigger problem than the captain is letting on. Okay. Like, Tim, it's definitely a problem. <laughs> and he's just happy he doesn't have to deal with it. Ah, okay. Uh, now a mind dive is, doesn't necessarily have to do damage, does it? No. Okay. So now I'll do a mind dive so I can go a level deeper. Cool? To who? Clemens or the uh, captain? To Clemens. Yes. And that is a 26. So. Um, hey. Hey. <laughs> That's. Uh, whoever laughed is my friend. So. Whoever did not laugh. <laughs> I, it was me. I got you. I totally got it. <laughs> so. Clemens is very concerned over the maintenance crew that they've lost. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, now, they, for, the sake, for, for the sake of brevity, can I sort of stream this to my comrades? And even though they're probably, well, maybe I actually not, because I know the cat's going to freak out. So no, just keep telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so yeah, that, uh, that's basically is like, he knows some some bad shit happened to his his maintenance crew, and they, they haven't reported back, and they're not going to go to the shuttles um, themselves, which is why they hired you guys. Okay, and um, any, the, so they don't know what the threat is; they just know that they lost their crew somehow. Yes, and uh, the captain's leading you into the the main um, office area, so he can show you what they know. Okay, okay. Have they, or at least uh, what they're giving? Willing have to they give divested you. us of our armor and weapons yet? Yeah, they have uh, basically maintenance crew pulling them off the shuttle and taking it down the the cargo lift to will you'll be going to do your investigation. But as it stands now, you're going just in your civvies to the office area. And and GM, one last question before you. Uh, 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 but at this level, do I need to actually... I'm, I'm making the effort to touch. Do I need to touch uh, for these skills? Uh, it should say whether or not it's uh, on so your me, skill sheet, whether it's touch so, or hand-to-hand or... So mind dive is um, RB1? Uh, range bracket 1. So that's anywhere within 5 meters. And how about tele- how about just telepathy? Uh, to- telepathy. So that just kind of works within a, a pretty broad area. Uh, but again, that's just the surface thoughts, what people are willing to you know, expose to you without trying to block you out. Correct. Okay. Just wanted yeah, to clarify. Because, I mean, most of them know what a Chetillion is, so they know what you're capable of, which is why you have to wear the you know, the ceremonial outfit with the crystal saying what your capabilities are. Right. All right. Thank you. Hestu, sure. Hestu lets his armor and stuff, he gives the pack to over it, but he, uh, he keeps his gazinta which is the uh, the Razat version of the Swiss Army knife, and just holds it in his hands. Battle Lord GM, is it possible? Because I have a uh, little zap gun. Is that possible? I could have that on me without anybody noticing it. Uh, it depends on the gun. Um, well, it's and a, whether or not the, they. It's the smallest of the the uh, these the guns, and um... is it the noisy <laughs> cricket? Basically, it's a noisy cricket. Um, So I can try and make one of my skill rolls um, to try and let me pull my skill up. Which one would it be? Stealth and concealment. 69. So I will make a roll. So Uh, I'm going to make a roll to try and conceal the weapon. 
I'm trying to conceal this buzzing cockroach gun. I have what? A minus what? Did you find a it? minus 20. Because okay. they act, they're they're right actually just a little well, bit more ever looking to make sure, yeah. All right. Well, if they see it, they see it. I can try to talk my way out of it. Six, ah, 36 on the die. So I oh, yeah, you, pull you it off. His. And so it's, yeah, so I make it by uh, minus 24, and I make it by 13. Yeah, he, he uh... Should I make a roll if, as well? For my... Because I have that concealed, uh, I have that concealed item. Oh, the got. one that's... Yeah, that one's actually, he's going to have a harder time seeing, but yeah. Yeah, so I've got, so will that go with my, so I couple that, was it 80% plus my stealth? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's over 100%. Well, it's, there is still the minus 20, but yeah. I rolled a 13. Yeah, so. so. Damn. Good roll so far. We have not did, did, did the double uh, double O's Don't yet. jinx us right now. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to be rolling next, hopefully, so I'm hoping it'll be Matt, the fought. It'll be perfect. So, <laughs> so you, you, you do sneak in your, your little concealed guns. It's in the it's in the Gazinta. Yeah. So they, hey, uh, baby, you always got to be ready to party, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> is that where you store your stuff, up your Gazinta? That, that's just dash hole, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your Gazinta. Oh, my God, that's fucking hilarious. That's right. called my thorax. <laughs> Dicks. So he leads, he leads you from the shuttle bay. So you can see where the freight elevators are leading to the uh, you know, the lower decks of the uh, bay. And you can see where the luxury elevators are for the public to use when they arrive. And you take off to the side into the uh, into an office area. And it looks like it's just a big general, general sci-fi command center. Little monitors everywhere. And finally, he turns to you and of in front of a wall of uh, displays. He goes, hey, here's the problem. Um, as you know, the station is apparently infested with a hostile organism. And this is a luxury vacation spot, so we don't want our passengers alarmed uh, by the presence of either the rodents or the armed people hunting them. As a result, you'll be requested to wear the civilian attire or one of our uniforms when you're in the public areas. Uh, but you're free to equip yourselves as you see fit in the, the lower level or the service corridors. Um, what sort of uniforms do you wear? I mean, they're wearing, uh, looks like, the comms officer looks like he's wearing a bellhop uniform. That's, that's what um, I, I, I don't know why in my mind, I was like, they're probably wearing bellhop uniforms. Do we have a short hat? Like. The first, uh, the first mate is wearing, uh, looks like a stained jumpsuit. And the captain looks like he's wearing a, a not like a naval captain's uniform, but a formal suit. R- wearing capris. Um, <laughs> I'll take I'll take whatever your mechanics wear. And Clemens nods and uh, he says something to his calm and he's like, "Someone will bring it to you." But he's well, like, I want one of them snazzy, uh, that, like what he's wearing, and he points to the bellhop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fancy. <laughs> I'll see if we have that in your size. My mama, my mama, would be so proud she saw me in this kind of get up. He shakes his head, but uh, yeah. Leo Ryan's wearing a jumpsuit. A jumpsuit, yeah. That seems functional. <laughs> but let's see what you have to offer as far as civilian wear. Yeah, well, what you're wearing now will be fine for the public areas until we get to the maintenance hatch where the rest of your equipment will, will wait. If that's okay with you, if you would like, the, the jumpsuits will be happy to provide them for you. It's like, here's what else we know. About three weeks ago, we were hit by a, a debris storm. Um, apparently, it happens every thousand or so years uh, on our orbit, and we just happened to be in that year. Uh, unfortunately, um, we did register some impacts. We did not experience any loss of pressure or exposure to the vacuum. That may be how th- these rodents got on. Since that time, um, our in our maintenance tunnels, we've heard audio recordings of these animal noises. We don't have any cameras down there. It's an old station. We only have the monitoring in the public access areas. All we really have are the pressure sensors and uh, you know, sound sensors down there. And in your transfer from the shuttle bay to the command center, you kind of get that feel of the luxury hotel accommodations are where they put all the work. Everything else looks like it's just the, you know held together with spit and paint. So, so question about that. Um, just overall feel of like this galaxy. Are, are we like? 
like kind of alien like 1970s technology or are we like Babylon 5 or are we like Star Trek what's what's just like visually what 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 sounds the... like Babylon 5 visually it's closer to Babylon 5 okay except for yeah. we're now in the dodgy end of the hotel yeah or, well, we're, yeah, we're, we're, so we're, or whatever it's like it's we're, Babylon we're, we're 5 in, in the sector. public area that's it yeah, i was going to say that tier brown sector brown sector yeah, yeah. oh great there like said that and then like aliens in the you know, retro garbage crap in the uh, dark corners. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a nice facade. Well, yeah. it sounds like you probably got some black tail wrigglers or some long tall scratchers. They'll ride a piece of garbage through the space thing, get right upside your uh, your energy spales. <laughs> hard to get them out. Burn them out. I'm so impressed by your lexicon. It's amazing. Please, please continue. <laughs> Believe me, I'm sure he knows a great deal about vermin. Oh my gosh! You, know, you get, you get ain't nothing better than having a couple da- a couple of rats dancing around in your fart sack at night. Sure. <laughs> See, anyway, uh, Roger. I've got to try and remove all emotion. <laughs> Roger, <laughs> play, play the audio file we've we've got for them. And he hits a button, and you guys hear uh, a noise. What sounds uh, like cats being murdered? Um, don't don't listen. Don't listen, Nathan. girl. He'll put his he'll put his hands. Nathan, on I want you to roll ears. an intuition check. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Now just this, this, uh... Nathan, roll an intuition. Oh shit. Uh alright, so I'm rolling my oh uh so whatever it is I probably failed. I rolled a ninety two. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so this is like stress dice and aliens intuition. probably, so you're gonna go <laughs> So what's your intuition? So my off full intuition is fifty six. So you would just make it. There is a bonus for you since you are a scissor act. It's it's uh, cat porn. It's scissor act porn. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, is it one of hers? <laughs> <laughs> Not. She wouldn't be able to tell by that role, unfortunately. Uh, uh, I, I rub against I, Bubba Fott's leg. <laughs> I, I, I have a question. Present. When 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 the when the uh, the first mate went to go enter that into the uh, did he enter a password? Or did you use a key card to log into the computer? Uh, the the communications uh, officer, that's Roger, the the kid. Yeah. Uh, no, he he doesn't enter faster. He just hits a button and plays. He blushes furiously once it starts playing, oh. and uh, he mashes a bunch of other buttons. Um, some of the displays flicker. I and weak then, at him. <laughs> he he just blushes redder. He I'll hits say, a button again. Uh, do you need uh, some? You look a little hot under the collar. Do you need something to help you there? <laughs> no, 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 I got this. It's fine. You got <laughs> bulge in your drawers. Are you okay? My goodness. What is going I don't know why. Here? I'm now picturing Sean's character. It's like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Me too. I was like, I was like, either that or some sort of like yeah. string tie. <laughs> I totally <laughs> slipped into the lawyer voice. I just went right into him. Sir, my good sir. <laughs> I might have That's to see it. this. It's Norm, see Mac- us, Norm McDonald see us like a suit. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah. That might be my character. That might be the new voice. So, so. so after a couple of minutes, he hits the right button, and this time you hear what sounds like um, metal bending noises. Just, you know, tearing and crumbling. Um, it's amazing. And a low rumbling noise. Hmm. And... Captain says, we recently thought that the station had undergone some metal fatigue, uh, possibly from the uh, debris impact. So we sent in a repair team. The computer picked up this uh, audio an hour after they went in. And he gestures to Roger again. And this time when he hits the button, you hear some growling noises and then just screams and fleshy terror noises. Bubba will look back over at the battle cat like, are, are these... It's like, is this the right noise again, or is this more of the scissor act This is a, this, <laughs> no, this sounds like a. This is the crime. this is the right noise. <laughs> this is. I'll actually turn to the to the razet. The first noise is with the metal fatigue. If I were metal fatigue, what do you think they were? That was not that was not metal fatigue. That was something being disassembled. That was that was what I call possibly murder. with. Can I make? Can I make a? Can I make a a call? A, a roll and can see do if I can get intuition check. Um, hmm. Plus twenty. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious. But God, if you fail this, it'd be funny. It would be funny. Uh, is it my? Is it against my half? Or it's it's my against fault? your half. Your skills are always okay. against your half. Plus your your any skills you have. But yeah, twenty seven. Twenty seven. So. so you know it's the metal noises. Um, it's metal fatigue in that something is 
tearing metal apart. Yeah. It, just, it is being manually ripped apart. Possibly by something quasi-organic, I would say. And <laughs> rats do that? It's like, we sent in a security team to recover the bodies and seal the area. But they only found two of the three, and none of those were in one piece. Here are the photos from the scene. And huh, they flick a button, and I'd like each of you to make a constitution check. All right. Oh, that was oh, quick. Was I any, bonuses for some, any bonuses for people who eat those parts? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, under half or under the full? You have to make under the half. I have to so use my I, mental defense now. Fought, fails. I got a 46, and my <laughs> half is 37. <laughs> oh, my God. Mine's 30, 25. This is going to be horrible. 32. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Even with my physical fitness, I don't think so, I can 29. So, unsurprisingly, I, oh, wait, the air... Stop, stop. I was what? joking earlier, right? I just rolled 100. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of friend is your... your, your so... I say, I say I'm <laughs> <of vomiting. laughs> oh, This is... This is... No, the, the Eridani, the uh, Rosat, and the Chitlian are... They're pretty much okay with what they see. The rest of you, however, immediately vomit as you see just body parts I, just I shredded. I can't believe I just shat myself. Well, this is horrible. <laughs> the, the walls have been painted with blood. Like um, there's a... intestines and bits hanging off everything. <laughs> Wait, is that is Bubba, that is Bubba that throws up a little in his mouth. No, that, that, that. <laughs> Bubba will throw up a little in his mouth. He's like, oh, oh, uh, that's a little bad. He turns around, looks. <laughs> Space Man, there's just a. <laughs> it's like the Family Guy episode. When the bubble just, starts throwing up. I can't stop, don't throw. Oh, God, oh, God, stop. God. No, the, uh, uh, the Orion. All. The Orion completely deadpan goes, Darfits get ordinary when they're hungry. That was awesome. And uh, oh. the captain uh. just says, uh, The doc says they've been ripped to shreds. This is obvious. I think, I think so. Oh, God. So like, this is the location to the restroom. How this is the location of so uh, hamburgers. <laughs> so hot dogs. <laughs> My small stomach holds a lot of food. Why did the shuttle have foie gras? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those calf livers. <laughs> the captain says, this is the location that, that the... Uh, the noises and the attacks uh, originated. Uh, Roger will guide you uh, from here using comms t to get you to that uh, that location. He'll also tell you if it's uh, safe to shoot in that area of the service tunnel uh, without risk of endangering the integrity of the station, exposing yourselves to vacuum, uh, or shooting into uh, occupied areas of the hotel itself. I hate vacuums. This... Uh, most of these areas must be accessed manually. Uh, these are all the service tunnels that provide your your grav systems, your life supports, uh, your power. Um, this resort is actually built on an old retrofitted mining station, and the, the guts of it are quite antiquated. There's no surveillance monitoring down there, as I mentioned before. Um, we only have the pressure loss sensors and a few audio sensors. So we'd like you to get you as soon as possible. What? Well, yes. Captain Smith, just ask, answer the Razat. <laughs> I, I, I would like ac I would like maintenance access to the terminals in that area. There are no terminals in that area. It's all uh, manual controls. <laughs> if a being that could ha that has multiple tentacles and an insect face could look disgusted, <laughs> he absolutely looks disgusted. <laughs> now the Razat vomits. <laughs> 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 you you really don't want that to happen. <laughs> Manual finger? Oh, is that a finger? <laughs> it looks just like what's on the video. <laughs> Case closed. Case. <laughs> Jinkies. <laughs> so Clemens uh, calls for a cleanup crew to uh, clean up uh, Sean's mess. <laughs> and, Space uh, man sprayed. He's like. If you'd like a moment to freshen up, I can meet you at the uh, the cargo ele elevator in the shuttle bay. And we'll I say take I need a, a breath mint. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy to take you down to the maintenance shuttles themselves. So, so the so the the Razat holds out a canteen. Is like, he holds a canteen out to you? So oh yeah. You might not. Hummin, I, I, I. Oh, Hummin. Hmm. What yeah, you might that? not. You might not want that. Yeah, he, he would not. Clemens sniffs it, it and uh, I sniff it. it's like 
it's, it's, it's motor oil. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank it, it you. No, no, he, my he friend. He pours no. a little bit into his <laughs> mouth. I, and just, I appreciate it, that. It's like I, this high viscosity motor <laughs> oil. I think that would, even though it probably would taste better than what's in my mouth now, it wouldn't be healthy for me. So I have to deny that. <laughs> but I say I thank you, sir. I'll look at the fight again with his aluminum antenna head. <laughs> mm. What do you call yourself again? Oh, my name is Bubba. Bubba the Fight. I'm really excited. I'm going to get to kill something. I'm assuming you, you go back and wipe off all the vomit and get a mint uh, and go back to the elevator where Clemens is waiting. And he just stands there quietly, hits, hits the button for the lower levels, uh, and doors open into a very... Um, utilitarian looking area with all the ductwork and the pipes and the conduit. It's like equipment's uh, right there by the entrance to the maintenance hatch. Uh, if you need anything, just shout out to Roger. Roger. Is Roger How standing is Roger there? Mo- no, Roger's uh, on comms right now. How is Roger monitoring? Just this? purely by audio comms. Okay, so he has no location feed. Nope, he's working solely based on where you're telling him he is. and so He knows you're starting at this maintenance portal. Uh, and he's going to direct you from there. You, you didn't put chips on my armor, did you? Not that you know, but no, they they, they look at you like you're crazy. Um. <laughs> okay. so, uh, Hestu will, will go in and inspect his gear. <laughs> so 55G. Um, Hestu will inspect his gear before putting on, make sure it wasn't been tam- tampered. But, but they didn't even open the, the containers that uh, they brought down from the shuttle. Okay, then he'll put, yeah. put his armor on. I will break the wax seal. Yeah, I will get my stuff together. My get Bubble, my rifle out. Uh, get dressed. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll load up. He keeps his tinfoil on underneath the helmet. <laughs> so you put, put, yeah, putting on everything? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Speak up. Yeah, if we can like, tear stuff, people apart like that, we gotta, you know, gotta be careful. Can you hear things with that aluminum foil on your ears, under your helmet, under your sheaths? What? I can hear everything. <laughs> but my disappointment. Sure, you hear me. I can, I, can, I can hear all the voices. <laughs> so when you guys are all suited up in your gear... When you, have when the you gear, say that, the Raza turns his head and looks at you. <laughs> I was waiting for the Raza to go, but wait! <laughs> but wait, there's more. You hear them too? <laughs> Doesn't say anything. <laughs> Just some tentacles wiggle. <laughs> all right, let me make sure I... Got everybody's name right. Well, I guess I should probably get the Razet's name. Uh, Hestu. Hestu. Uh, Hestu. Yes. Hestu Vorin. He gave his name. Hestu Vorin. Yeah, I'm fairly certain on the, the flight from the cargo ship on the shuttle, you guys had plenty of time to provide your names. Uh, Sizarek. Uh, Bagheera Karen. Karen. Yeah. Was it DeSanto? Uh, <laughs> I just changed it to Del. De, Del Santo. Del Santo. Um, Del Santo. El Flor, uh, Del Floridia. Del Santo. Del Floridia is what. It, yeah, it's on the uh, Discord. Uh, Del Floridia. And what? And what race are you again? He's a Chatillion. And what do they? What do they just generally look like? They look like asparagus with arms and legs. Ah, okay. Yeah. And they're four feet tall. About. You could ride me. Yeah, he, he, he could. He's cute. How is the question? He's got you yeah. got that ribbed head, so you know there's many yeah. features that. Uh... <laughs> so I'd like to introduce you to my friend Butter. <laughs> 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 so the Razat, you notice when he he travels, he always he's just flying. He he flies from area to area. Uh, he puts on his armor and he has mechanical wings that pop that or that extend out of the back of the armor that resemble exactly his wings. Oh, and they they flex lovely. they flex and fly so. Hey, you fool. Uh, Malcolm, what's your character's name again? Uh, Farouk Idan. Uh, they all have the same, I guess, last name, but it's Farouk Idan. I D N, I D A N rather. Yeah. I D A yeah I D A N. That just means warrior, basically. Okay, Farouk. But Farouk Idan is your proper name. Yeah, but are they proper? <laughs> I would say, as you guys are gearing up, that the, like the Raza just keeps strapping extra things to the outside of his armor. <laughs> He's got a device belt. He puts that on. He's got the Swiss his Gazinta, which is his version of a Swiss Army knife. 
There's other things that are just getting stuck on, taped on. Um, it, 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 he's just carrying, he's just carrying all this gear. Yeah, you see Bubba Fott. He gets um, kind of a heavy suit of armor and a helmet. Uh, you see him strapped. It looks like a big cha- uh, uh, um, a shotgun on his back, and he pulls out a, a chainsaw. He's got it's kind of oil and everything. It's got a little smiley face painted on it, and he starts sticking. Um, he starts taking what look like paint cans with small detonators on them, and starts strapping them on to his armor. And he's got some other that look like little uh, like smoke, like little clusters of like smoke bombs all taped together. Yeah. So so uh, uh, Bagheera's putting on her armor, and she's got a body mount harness with a uh, a fluid gun called an F cannon on it. And she's also got a couple of hard points uh, mounted on her uh, biceps uh, that have these uh, uh, rocket launchers on them. So she's got like two rocket launchers and, and, uh, and a big old fluid gun. So uh, Spaceman has a uh, nice set of armor. He carries a sniper rifle. And he has a small like pistol he carries on him. Um, it has a sort of a camo pack to it so it could help him. Uh, it has his... Uh, camouflage unit attached to it to help him fade in. But uh, mm-hmm. that's what he's carrying. Gary Santo uh, puts on his armor and uh, he um, he does have a um, target acquisition uh, which he um, activates just to help him maybe get a layout of uh, what's his surroundings that he can't, that he can't visibly see. What Gary uh, okay. does uh, besides uh, get ready is judge everybody around him very harsh <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he does have a uh, he does have a uh, laser rifle uh, which he has at the ready in case he should need it but he doesn't think he's going to in, in this scenario but we'll see okay once he sees when Clement sees are all suited up uh, he goes to the the maintenance hatch uh, enters the code and the door pops open and he just says, uh, all right, Rogers will guide you from here. Now, Rogers um, starts walking you through. You know, as you guys all pass through the hatch, um, Clemens closes behind you, and you hear it latch into place. There doesn't seem to be an access pad here uh, visible to you guys. Well, it seems to be we have been uh, left here to our own devices. But uh, you, you hear the uh, the nervous uh, Rogers go. Okay, okay, guys. Um, you're gonna you're gonna want to go ahead and take a take, take the first left. Yeah, with a bit of a question in his voice. Uh, is this ta- is this taking us to the site of the most recent attack? Uh, well, the only attack that they know of. So yeah, it's uh, the point where the they recorded that video footage is where they're directing you. Okay. Uh, is Roger wearing any kind of? Armor or anything? Uh, he's no, not. Rogers. No, he's on the comms. He's not yeah. here. He's oh, back. He's over okay, there. Okay, okay. I thought he was. Rogers. He's just like. <laughs> the whole, yeah, the whole point of you guys being here is none of them want to deal with whatever's in the tunnels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <they are> <laughs> much <laughs> it. Like he was down yeah. here with us. I was yeah. like, <laughs> no, he's, like no. he's, he's nervous on the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, can I ask what, Bub, what what Bubba's commo unit looks like? Commo unit. Yeah, so just communications unit. Yeah. yeah, is it is it a big pair of of? of uh, it's just like an phone? AM radio <laughs> taped to the side of the Perfect. I, I was thinking it was like the, there's uh, those kids uh, the the fluffy uh, earmuffs in, the, from the eighties with the big <laughs> wire that comes up. <laughs> that one kind of gets interfered perfect, with you know? all my foil. I say, sir. So yeah, so there's a whole bunch of. Rogers directing you. Oh yeah, no, okay. Now take your next right, and uh, then another right, and it's clear so how's after the lighting. Dark. How's the yeah. lighting? Is it lighting is uh, it's pretty dark. Um, okay, I, I can put a. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that at all. There's just, just keep going. There's basically a uh, light at each of the intersections, but in between, it's, it's just unless it's a really long stretch, it's just really dark. Um, it, it, it's dark. Has some some kind of night vision, right? Uh, whatever your vision, you get a, vi- a bonus vision, so you see better in the dark. Yeah. Okay. All right. But you're not seeing anything other than conduit and ducts and pipes yet. The uh, Santa goes to the nearest wall and flicks the light switch. Does the, 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 the lights go on? <laughs> Nothing. 
Because for the first time in all of space history, it would be really nice. Like, oh, yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> hey, hey, that really helped a lot. Uh, good idea. Uh, it was worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. I was like, Bubble, Roger, uh, you know, the captain budget is like, we've been meaning to get that fixed, but it's just <laughs> not in the budget. <laughs> Again, again, the Razat like turns his head <laughs> towards the mysterious captain. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble will unsling his shotgun. So the uh, the quarters themselves are about uh, two meters wide, about three meters tall. Um, occasionally, you'll encounter a door. Some might have a light on them. Some might not. They'll, they'll they all seem to be locked. Um, but. Finally, as Rogers directs you around the corner, uh, you stumble over a, a body. Well, hey, I think I found one of them dead people. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you uh, remember, see. <laughs> they found, uh, they recovered cool. uh, two of the bodies of the three of the three workers that were down there, but not the third. Uh, how, how, how's he looking? Uh. He's um he's bloody. Um he's he has like scarring and torn clothes uh from the neck down, from the neck up is just gone. All right, well uh, let's do a first aid check on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what what are you doing? He's uh quite dead. The attire he's wearing is definitely not the jumpsuit of the maintenance workers though. What does it look like? Uh Can make it, a roll of some sort? It looks uh, kind of like uh, gym clothes. Gym clothes. Gym clothes. Gym clothes. And civilian gym clothes. So you know this man. Uh, let me. Uh, hey, uh, excuse me. Let me check him out here. See if I can find any uh, ID or anything on him. Or uh, was that intelligence sure gathering space, or something? Jeez, I'll be fine. I'll uh, just just move away, my friend. <laughs> oh, let's calm down now. Give me a chance. <laughs> give, me, give me a chance <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> So do I need to make a roll or anything? Uh, uh, no, you, for that okay. you, you you do you just like frisk him basically. You you do find uh, an ID card. It's uh, his name is Alfred Manford. So hello, uh, what's this? So what's our communications guy? Roger, right? Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Roger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Roger. Ro- Rogers. Roger. Uh, Rogers. 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 Rogers, I got an ID card for this gentleman here, and I n- g- give the name. I said he's in gym clothes, so. I think uh, you might have a bigger problem than you realize, because I doubt this fellow came down here to do a run. You hear a panic uh, sort of a, just a second. He hits the button, and uh, he means to hit the mute button, but you hear him having the conversation in the background. He's like, this, this is bad, Captain. They've, they found one of the guests. And Which guest? Oh, Mr. Man- Manford. Oh, son of a bitch. He's one of the rich ones. And back and forth. Yeah, this is bad. But just... Never mind, just time to get back to work. And I, so I say that the cost of this just went up for you guys quite a bit, I think, uh, with the uh, fact that we found uh, one of your rich guests down here. The captain, his family the captain to butts in. That uh, the terms were agreed to ahead of time before you guys shipped out with SSCC. Well, We've got all the paperwork. A, you you a, do <laughs> realize on page 57 of the contract under subsection C, if you're not completely logical or open with us, it opens up to certain sort of penalties where you have to pay. You should always read the fine print, sir. That'll be up to we our can lawyers. Discuss that later. <laughs> oh, I look forward to speaking to your lawyer, sir. I'm very good at it. So let's go for friends. I do. So on hearing he was rich, starts digging through the guy's stuff. Oh, you, you, you if you look up, it's like, oh, they took his foot. <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sort of like a lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> so, if you. I was certain the foot was them. Well, no. anyway. With further investigation, you see that <laughs> there is a a blood trail leading to a, a nearby door, uh, where it looks like this body was from which it looked like this body was dragged. He looked like he crawled from that door out to this hallway. <laughs> so that's very observant of you. So why don't you go forward and investigate? We will. All right, I will cover you. And at this point, uh, I am going to make a stealth concealment roll. Uh, and to try and uh, keep not be as well seen because I am the smallest and probably most fragile of this group. Uh, no, I think I, Cooper, Cooper's yeah, actually. I'm too. Well, that doesn't matter because I think I'm the smallest and fragile of this group. So <laughs> therefore, I'm going to make a roll and see how good I do. And Fair I enough. do uh, a roll of fifteen so, my, under sixty-nine. So I'm pretty. 
Nice. I'm yeah, you're, you're uh, good shape. Okay. I walk over. So the fox the <laughs> over the door. Yeah, walks over to the door. Okay, I'll get my plasma sword ready and prepare to back him up. Well, at least. So I do. What do you eat? I uh, just door I brought, a knob or a I brought button, those snacks or? with me. Oh, <laughs> just a you just can't a lever. Prove I did. Those foot shaped. Those those foot shaped Nike snacks. I say, sir, are you eating <laughs> that? That should be least grilled. I'm saying you should. You put some spice upon it at least. So doors a uh, lever actuated and it just opens inward. All right. Uh, He'll open the door and kind of like shotgun at the ready to open the door. And you see an empty storage room, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not above an you, empty storage room. I say it's invisible. Above you, you see some light coming. An through. alien as big no. as a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> a fifty-foot beast unfolds <laughs> from the ceiling. <laughs> I, I try to parlay with it. <laughs> I was I was trying to figure that in, Nathan. Good job. Right. I lock the tank hatch with tank. <laughs> we all hide in the tank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, in the in the ceiling, there's there's a hole that appears to have been rent through the floor. Uh, the giant claw marks, oh. and there's like little bits of flesh in clothing that are clinging to the the jagged points left behind. And you can see through the hole that uh, above you is a grav ball court that clearly uh, poor <laughs> Alfred was exercising in uh, when he was pulled through. <sighs> this hole is, is only about uh, a half meter inside in wow. its largest dimension, so it wasn't very big. So they had to work to get the body through. Roger. As it, Roger appears, sir. it appears that he fell through a shoddy floor. Landed on the ground and then crawled out into the hall and died. I say, Roger, <laughs> it looks like this was an accidental death, like my friend said. He fell through your shoddy floor and was torn asunder by himself. Yeah. Now is that a is that an active part up there? Like people? I have a uh, there's I nobody in there right now. No. Theory that probably because Boba? of the hole with the bloody it's wrench. It's possible that something pulled him through the hole. Oh, holes go mm. both ways. Do they? They do. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess uh, it's kind of a small hole. Uh, which one of you little folks going to stick your head up there and see what's going on? I'll move away and down because I'm not small. I'll just <laughs> check out the rest I'll, of this I'll, room I'll, looking for other holes. I'll move underneath it. You just climb up on my back. I, I can literally just fly up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or that. Chewing I, on the foot. I mean, only, that, would, that would be more hygienic. Yeah. <laughs> it's only about nine feet up, so there's, it's not far. Yeah, I'll, I'll fly up. It's got like a dead yeah, shoelace, and I'm like, me so, water. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Faruka will look around to see if there's like, I mean, if it looks like claws tore open the hole, are there claw marks or something like actually holding onto the ceiling moving up there? There's. It's it's hard to say because it is an old uh, utilitarian station uh, originally used for mining, so it could be. But there's also enough, you know, pipe work and conduit that it could have just climbed up through there. Okay. The blood is down here. Yeah, the blood is definitely down there. But it does look like it was torn open from this side. Yes. Jinkies, clue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a very strong warrior name, a word. <laughs> so, uh, or discovery so I, of great things. <laughs> so discovery of potential combat. Jinkies. <laughs> sure uh, so I fly up through the hole. And, uh, uh, I don't think you can fit through the hole. Or fly up enough so I can see through yeah. the hole? It's, it's a gravel ball court uh, that is currently empty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, fly back down. There are no, there is nothing up there except a grav ball cord. Do you know what this means? What does it mean? It means the rat started in the grav ball cord and then came down here. Um, or they are down here and dragged a meal through the crawl back to the grav court floor because they were hungry. 
Ooh, that's a big rat. That's going to be tasty. Uh, GM, can I mind dive a dead person? No. Also, uh, his head isn't even present, so... <laughs> <laughs> Nor is his foot. <laughs> can I mind dive a... Can Nor I, can is I mind, his foot. <laughs> can, I mind, can I mind dive a foot? <laughs> it's pronounced fought. So I also didn't mention which head I was talking about. <laughs> so, incidentally, the uh, the mind dives, <laughs> all your generation powers, the mind dives, things like this, the specific generation powers do use up one of your power points. Um, each session, so you only use one so far. Each session, each each uh, it's effectively each matrix used uses up a power point um, that can be regenerated over over time. You're actually oh, wow. well well stocked for that, so. Well, it looks like it's missing pieces, so it must have drug them somewhere. Maybe I could track it back to its lair. You, you Are you think good at you tracking? Can... Oh, I used to, uh, used to <laughs> track all kinds of little things, vermins and stuff like that, back up in the mountains. Where well, are you good at it, though? Well, I mean, you know. Well, unless you're better, sir, I say we give him a chance to try. Oh, I don't have any interest in doing that. I just want to know this still. Oh, I'll get you now. Um... Just as a side note, every time uh, I hear uh, I hear Matt, I, I want to I want to impart knowledge and give him perfect diction. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you gotta buy me a drink before you give me perfect diction. <laughs> the, whole, the whole time it's just. Like, just, just, just be patient. Just, just be <laughs> well, I'll point out what I did discover to Boba. That helps. Oh, what would you find? Scrapes there. <laughs> I believe those are just that's just grease but I didn't find much of anything alright well let's I'll go uh, Bubble will go back out in the hall and see if he can see like where this thing dragged its foot and its head maybe there's some blood trails I I do have scouting and tracking mm-hmm. uh, not great it's at 42 but I do have it's scouting better and than tracking. some of us it's definitely yeah. worth a shot yes All better right. than what I have I got a 79. <laughs> so you, you well, it looks like he went back to the elevator. <laughs> you can see that there are uh, drops of blood that start to go off in a certain direction, uh, but you lose them pretty quickly in the grime and dirt. Well, it looks like he went this way, but he's a, he's a, maybe he ate the whole thing by then. That's as far as it got. So let's go that way. Okay. So you, you keep going okay. that way. You do hear um, a loud hum of, uh, you know, Mechanical hums through machinery, air handlers, kind of noise. That uh, it tends to go steadily louder in one direction, steadily softer in another. Um, Esther, what is that? Uh, can I make a roll? Yeah. Uh, what do you want, a repair roll or or intuition? Uh, intuition, well, whichever one is your. Uh, is it, what's your repair roll for? Uh, I could do repair vehicle or compute. Well, it wouldn't be computer operations. No. Maybe just uh, intuition? Yeah, just do intuition. Okay. No. 96. That's, that there's machine noises. Um, yeah, even with a bonus, you wouldn't have made it. <laughs> non computerized machine voices. Very manual machine voices. Very but mechanical the, stuff. Uh, it's called steam. The blood trail that, uh,. <laughs> That uh, Bubba had started following was leading in the direction more of more machine noises rather than less machine noises. Let's let's go down here. Sure. It's possible maybe it's it's making a racket with those machines. So we're in the physical area where all the machinery's at. So obviously it, it wouldn't make sense uh, that it would hide there. You know, so spaceman. So uh, t- spaceman, you have a bit of stuff like everywhere down here. So. Bagheera, if you I? could... Um, Look on my armor. I don't see anything. Uh, roll a... Uh, ah. a, a sense... Um, smell, vision, hearing, what? Uh, smell. Specifically in this case, yes. Oh, so so I have a, a smell modifier of 40, but I'm not sure what my stat is. No, the smell modifier of 40 is what you want. I just want to know what you roll against oh, okay. it. Okay, I rolled a 78, so... So right. you would uh, actually make it. Okay. Um, you do smell the smell of blood uh, from a particular direction. I, I, 
I, I smell there's blood. <laughs> yeah, I can taste it. It's coppery. It's that way. I say we should be ready to party. Make sure your weapons are primed and ready. Let's go forward, are, my friends. Are you on the trail, girl? Go get her. Go get, <laughs> go get her. Go get her. She's got her. You're on the trail. I she, she's like on the, the trail. What, what are you doing? What, what, is, what is this on the she's trail? Gotta <laughs> she's got to sit. I say, what is this? You just <laughs> calm down. Oh, you sorry, remind Mom. me of a character in a story I read once who just ran into battle and died all the time and resurrected. Please don't. So uh, may you find your enemy and face to face and take him. Yeah. Following right, Bagheera, so I'll, I'll head down that way. Yeah. Well, following Bagheera, who's leading the charge in this case, um, you, you do <laughs> the to hum is just louder and louder until it comes to the point where even over comms, you're almost have to, having to shout to each other. And you get to. You're a, going to uh, die. Yeah. <laughs> it's a noise. You're going to die. You you're get to a door die. that just says uh, "ventilation room," and it's clear that the smell is, if not coming from there, at least passing through there, because that's where all the air goes. Um, ah, I say we open the door and throw the grenades in. <laughs> well, you know they're cutting us cheap anyway, so you know these things happen. What do you think, Roger? Roger. Yeah, the communications guy who's on oh, the comms. Oh. Dead silence. I say, Roger, you know, it would be a shame if all the guests got the smell of all that death. I He's would. probably asking his superiors, and they are shouting at him while we're on mute. Excuse me, my friend, you have your hand up. Yes, what is it you have to say? That is not a hand. Oh, I'm sorry, you're... Yeah. <laughs> Your appendage. Your appendage. Your appendage. It's a foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's a foot in his hand. <laughs> Explo- exploding the uh, the air purification, ventilation, and provision system in a closed environment with all the sentient beings aboard is generally bad. That's where all the breathy stuff comes from. Oh yes, of course. Wait, I got, I got, I got shot filled in Lulu right here, so I ain't gonna be damaging nothing. So why, why not go in there? I mean, just shoot me a rat. So on the uh, beside the door is in a sort of very soft green light is a little light up panel that just says "All systems nominal." Does it have? Uh, does, does it have any access terminal? Or it, it's it's literally just a, a light behind a plate of glass that lights up and it shows oh. "All systems nominal." It's comforting, though. <laughs> I like that green light. <laughs> I bet you do. Who wants to get this? You want somebody to get the door? And we're going I don't like to... red lights. Red lights kind of they kind of make me angry. Oh, I okay. Open, I open the door and go in. There's my like okay. I open okay. The door my, whole, and go my, in. my whole armor's outlined in red light. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does my so, tracking pick up anything? Uh, well, first, as soon as you walk in the door, um, roll me an agility. Him? What? What did That's, you walk in? Mm. I'm about to say the plant goes in first. You got twenty-two. Oh, the double deuce. Nice. Good job. Well, what's his agility? Uh, so your agility is good. So yeah, uh, you maintain your footing in what is uh, clearly a blood, blood slick floor. Ah, uh, there's blood. <laughs> I <laughs> just can't wait to fix. I, I hope I don't shit in my armor. I look yeah. around and it's going to take about a week to clean and disgust them. As you look around, uh, the room itself is about uh, 10 meters by 10 meters. And again, it's super loud in here. Um, there's so what is causing that noise? The air handlers. We, we needed to actually H-fat. continue making that noise. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the, uh, as the Chitillion surveys the scene, it's just blood and guts everywhere. Um, and... In one corner, uh, by a, a bunch of the ductwork, uh, there is a corpse. Mm. Ah, another corpse. Let's see who this is. What guest has been murdered? Yeah, I'll put away the plasma sword and just get the mace ready. <sighs> that seems better and more sacred. And I'll go and slide over to the slip over to the body. I'll try and use stealth to do it quietly. I guess. I mean. <laughs> You literally have. What? A Wait a second. Yes. Wait a second. There's like there's like a big huge boiler room. Yeah. So my stealth yeah. would just be stomping over there. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it would be impossible to fail the stealth check at this point because it's so freaking loud. So I just head over there to see. So is uh, it a metal floor? Uh, under the blood and guts, yes. Um, right. You see, uh, the gentleman there, uh, the body that's there is 170 centimeter tall human male, early twenties. Um, 
The body is still warm. Mm. Check his ID. Find out who he is. Check it. Yeah, I'll check its ID. There is no ID. Is there any money? He's he, he is wearing a, a uniform. It appears to be a uniform. Uh, there's no obvious insignia on it that you can see, but there's also a lot of blood staining and say he's just viscera. 61, 170 centimeters tall. A hundred? How many? 170 centimeters. Okay, he's taller than me. Okay, he's like five, yeah. five or something. This is like Six. a fresh kill. I'm gonna look around for a possible attacker. <laughs> yeah. Make sure there's no egg pods or nothing. Something's gonna hatch and attack us. <laughs> so well, I'll have as to you're... lean over them before they just to make sure that they're <laughs> <laughs> well in your Open face helmet. In your investigation, um again, he's he is also torn up like the other one was. Um he's in a few more pieces. Uh next to his body there are two canisters. One is hooked up to the uh station's uh air you know air handler. The other one is just lying separate uh unattached. Ooh, can I um can I, I go I go Hestu Look at these. Yeah, I'd like to go over and see what those are. Okay. Uh roll me a computer operation check. Okay. I have that skill. Uh uh, 55, and my skill is 62. Okay, so the one container that's entirely sealed, um, you don't know exactly what the gas is, but it, given the insignia on the side, it is definitely toxic. Whoa! The other one that's actually attached is a broad-spectrum um, knockout gas. And this, and these are connected to the main station's air supply. Correct. So it's clearly going out and amounts you know, to the rest of the station. <laughs> and it's act, it's, right it's now? actively feeding. It's actively feeding right now. I so think I I'll see t- why Roger's not responding. I'll turn. I'll turn that off. Uh, okay. I'll take those two canisters. <laughs> As you disconnect the the canister, though, um, roll me. Everybody, roll me in. Intuition check, or yeah, yeah observation check. Hey, what observation? observation check. Yeah, because I'm looking around now because I'm a little for worried. everybody. Yep. Uh, I rolled a skill fifteen, and I have the observation at uh, fifty-five. Yes, it is a skill. What if you don't what have is it? it? Uh, if What's, not, you're basically doing it uh, intuition. Intel, in, intuition. Okay. Um, Bubba has a four. Holy wow. fuck! Those ears. Uh, no, yeah, I uh, rolled a sixty. My uh, there you go, sixty. I rolled a ninety-four. Okay, I you're think just, there's blood on the floor. You, you just happen to be looking in the wrong direction. Holy shit, jinkies! I got a thirteen. Jinkies, I think he was a poisonous gas. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. we're up some observant fuckers right now. Yeah, everybody else apparently. Uh, Everyone else is. <laughs> here's the skittering uh, above them as a. Above us. It's a ten by ten meter room. Okay. And it, it comes out of a pipe. That's cool. It just, it I just, think it's you, funny. You hear clattering, and right in the dead center of the floor drops this uh, large behemoth with just two giant talons uh, for arms. And that's where we will end it right now.